the day before my husband and I arrived in Belfast, we heard the terrifying news from an Irish television channel in our hotel room in Dublin. A serious riot had broke out in West Belfast. Many gates were closed temporarily. Over 400 police officers from various different locations in the UK were brought into Northern Ireland. One of the headlines in the morning news the day after was that 22 protesters from both sides were arrested. Around 32 police officers were injured. According to the radio broadcast, many marchers encouraged others to participate this demonstration with help of emotive languages and provoking slogans. We were really nervous as the long distance bus approached Belfast city. Paramilitary organizations has always been a synonymous of the conflict in Northern Ireland in my head. I saw the zealous Catholic nationalists who see Northern Ireland as an obvious part of Ireland Republic could be as horrifying as Al Qaeda terrorists. Why is there so much hatred and difficult emotional traumatic memories? That could trigger ordinary people to behave like this. In many centuries, the segregation between the Anglo-Irish Protestants and the Catholics has been an unmitigated disaster. There is a physical separation between the two communities in terms of education, housing, and occupations. Less than two percent of grammar schools in Northern Ireland were integrated. Even the sport clubs have either Catholic or Protestant memberships. In the past, there was also a legal economic discrimination. Catholics were banned from buying land or receiving a formal education in Northern Ireland. In modern time, British government had paid a great effort to improve the situation and encouraged Protestant businessmen to hire Catholics. The results were far from satisfactory. Many Protestants felt that they have lost jobs mainly due to the affirmative actions. Because of the recent economic recession, the employment rate among the Catholics today is more than twice as high as among the Protestants. Hostility between them had increased. Many Catholics felt they have been frozen out of the society. Many of them felt a strong urge to avenge all terrible grudges from the past. In many years, the conflicts in Northern Ireland had made headlines in international news from all major TV channels. The atmosphere between the Catholic side and the Protestant side today is still very tense. Just by looking at each and every gate, how fake it really is, it reminds me once how terrible the situation. Was and how hopeless people must have felt when the situation was almost impossible to solve. And today, I really can't blame anybody because to fight for what you believe in is probably one of the most important virtue since the beginning of the human history. But on the other hand. To live in such a tense environment is probably not the most desirable utopia. The conflict is not a modern invention. Its roots could be traced back to the medieval period. The full snow Irish inhabitants were Celtic tribes who migrated from present-day Switzerland and South Germany 
In many centuries, the Gaelic culture flourished independent of the other European civilizations. There were altogether five kingdoms in this small island: the kingdom Ulaid, which later came to be called Ulster, occupied the northern part of the island. In the fifth century, Saint Patrick brought Catholic Christianity to Ireland. He later became the Bishop of Ireland and established the Cathedral Church in Armagh as an institution for Christian teaching. Irish Christianity had developed their own practices in comparison with the mainstream Catholic rules, which were dictated in Rome. For instance, priests could get married. Many important clergy positions. Could be held by ordinary laymen. Italian popes were not satisfied with this ecclesiastic development in Ireland. 1155, Pope Adrian issued a decree and granted Ireland to King Henry II of England. His intention was to bring Ireland into line with Catholic norms. Original human face I have seen, probably in the tourist sites. What I see from this artwork is Wales, 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 and again Wales. That is probably the most important object in such an eventful place. Wales is actually a symbol for transportation, for the humans' incredible intellect to communicate with. Each other, and the communication itself probably demands some kind of real knowledge. Just look at the eyes; it's made of English letters, and these eyes are looking forward to somewhere, probably in the future, where people can live side by side next to each other and feel good about themselves. Will all peacemaking efforts contribute to a more stable Northern Ireland in the near future? Could the democratic system find a possible solution, which could be respected by both sides? I'm not sure. Many young men and women were willing to risk their youth and lives to fight for the social justice in the past. The cynical side of me is very convinced. That many more young adults will be determined to carry on this action in the future. Many radical philosophies will probably trigger out new violent actions. The rational side of me feels that many residents in Northern Ireland must felt really tired of all violent orations they have heard. And bloody terrorist actions they have witnessed in their immediate vicinities. When they look into their children's eyes, many would probably like to make a promise that they would like to do whatever they could to contribute to a more peaceful Ireland in the future.